Hey everybody, I'm Todd Anderson. And I'm Ross Miriam. And you're watching the Versus series by StarCityGames.com. All right, Ross, you're down 03. Today we're playing standard. You better have a nice one. I I don't really know. I haven't played a lot of standard. <laughs> I hope my deck is nice. It did pretty well recently. But Ross, why have you not been playing a lot of standard? Is it because every tournament is team or modern? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's uh, kind of how it's been lately, but standard is, is still the talk of the town right now, mostly because uh, we have this new set that came out. What's it called? Dominaria. A yeah. return to the good old days where... Uh, all the heroes that I knew growing up, uh, Jaya Ballard. Um, the only Jorah, plane we ever needed. The only plane, we, you know, I think the Weatherlight was the only plane we ever needed. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I mean, it, it's been a, a real treat kind of going down memory lane with a lot of these characters. A lot of uh, second generation uh, of family members of older characters, yeah. like, you know, Raph Capuchin instead of Gerard Capuchin. And, and arguably, Raph is a lot better than old Gerard Cavishan, who just never saw play when it was in standard. That's true. Card was good and limited. Sure. Anywho, uh, but today we are going to be diving back into standard, and uh, we have a couple of decks uh, to choose between right now. And by a couple, I mean there's only really three decks in standard. We have uh, Black White's uh, History of Benalia, like mid rangey deck. It's three and a half decks. Let me let me let me do my spiel. Uh, there's Black Red Aggro featuring Unlicensed Integration, Heart of Karen, Scrap Heap Scrounger, uh, and then there's kind of like a bridge between whether or not you play uh, Karn Sign of Urza in this deck. A lot of people think that you just play more Chandras, maybe go a little bigger with Glorybringer, uh, and then there's a lot of people who want to be a lot more mid rangey and play Karn and uh, Chandra. Yeah, what do you just think about draw a that? bunch of cards with Planeswalker. Dude, Karn is great. Yeah, Karn is Planeswalkers great. Planeswalkers are great. Yeah, it's kind of like me, some Karn. And then there's Blue White Control, uh, the deck that can only win with Teferi, apparently. Uh, I hate it, but you know Brad re did really well with it at uh, Grand Prix Toronto. Uh, yeah, his I team hate that. Of, of Brian Brown doing Seth Manfield. Uh, I don't think Brad lost very many matches. I think he only, or he got a day one. I think he said he got a draw against Matthew Folks playing the Mirror. Not surprised. And then he two did, decks that he can't kill each other. He didn't lose a single match other, you know, other than that draw. And on day one, I don't know how day two went, but I know they made the finals, so he probably did pretty good. Yeah, it's a good deck. Uh, there's a few other decks in standard. There's like mono yeah, green, uh, black white. With, uh, mono I, green. I didn't talk about black white. Did you? You yeah, kept talking black, about white, red history black. Of Benalia. Okay. So didn't I? I'm I'm pretty sure I, did. I must have zoned out at some point. I yeah, don't know. you do that. Todd was droning on and on. We got constrictor decks. We got mono green decks. Nobody, I don't really know, understand why no one plays Godfarer's Gift anymore. Like that Blue Red Gift deck was like the best deck. And then it gained Skirk Prospector and suddenly this is bad. I guess like a million cast outs are around. No, every single creature has one toughness and there's four Goblin Chain Whirlers in a lot of decks. But the point is to just put them all in the graveyard. So yeah, Chain Whirler is just doing your work for you. But they also have four braids so they can just, cl they close out both. Like the Blue Red deck was really good for a while because it could have a plan B. Like just playing a bunch of medium-sized okay. creatures, you know, I actually saw the blue-red deck, like, beat down pretty well, and then once they were able to finally play a Fumigate or a Settle the Wreckage or something, then you sack everything and put Godfarer's Gift on the battlefield. Okay. Now, Chain Whirler kind of ruins plan, a, plan B, and it's literally Godfarer's Gift or Bust, and since everyone has four braids... Or four and, cast outs. Or four cast outs, and are fairly aggressive on top of that... Not really the best game plan. So okay, I think that's, makes sense. that's kind of the thing. I mean, it's kind of why uh, the Scarab God fell out of favor, too. You know, yeah. Everything exiles, nothing matters. Goblin Chain Whirler is just a busted card. It's very good. Spoiler alert, I have four in my deck today. I hope they are good. I have either a zero or a four, but I'm not cool. telling you which which number. <laughs> yeah, it's really either or. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's go and get to the match. Uh, we don't know each other's decks, so we're just going to start it off with you on the play? Yeah. All right, let's see go. if I can actually win a game. Yeah. Here for game one, I am on the play with a hand that's going to need a little bit of help. I would consider mulliganing this on the draw, but on the play, it's a definite keep. All right, we got the uh, the best two-card combo in the deck right here. I want to show this one off before I get started. Uh, the rest of my hand is keepable. 
Uh, but I'm effectively on a mold of six unless I get a little lucky. That's good. Seriously? What? Me and Brad played a blue-white mirror last week, and, and now we're playing a black-red. Okay. Well, you All know right. what they say. Great All minds right. think alike. That's true. But fools seldom differ. Well, never heard that one before. Yeah, that's right. the end of the phrase. Hmm. I'll get an energy. And I, I, yeah, I don't think I've ever heard the end of that phrase. Yeah. <laughs> It's one of those phrases that changes definition when you know the entirety of it. Only like one bad apple spoils the bunch. All right, I'll just magma spray. Yeah, Your turn. classic. Classic. Pass. <laughs> um, all right, so in this matchup, there aren't a lot of creatures that actually die to Goblin Chain Whirler. Like, sometimes you get to use Chain Whirler to deal the last... Uh, point of damage to a Chandra. Sometimes you get to use it to kill the token on Rekindling Phoenix. Um, I think I'm going to save it for now since uh, these are basically the two only two options I have. So, pretty sure you're just going to kill it with an Abrade or something and then untap yeah. and either play just, nothing or draw a land and play something good. just really want to use my mana. Uh, you can go. Alright, well how do you beat the big boy? All right, top two, land or Karn. You can have a land. All right. Really? Canyon, slough. Nope. Swamp. Nope. Uh, you got me. Cinder bear. <laughs> <clears throat> Ross, I feel a little bad for you, but only a little bad. Okay, we will, uh, I guess, just keep ticking up Karn. Which one? You can have the Heart of Kieran. I'm pretty sure that one's going to die, but that's fine. Uh, gain energy as well. I feel, I feel bad for you. I'm not going to lie. This is not good for you. He did. Go. Where's my where's my chippery happy Ross Merriam? I have a Pia too. Cool. You can go. What I don't have is a Karn on seven loyalty with two cards underneath it. <laughs> and are you upset about that or <laughs> Nope. It's just fine. Is that a glory bringer? That's pretty good. Exert. Smoosh. 13. Okay. I'll just keep ticking up. You can have a land. I think next turn I'll have a glory bringer, though. Pretty sure there's no way for you to deal 8 damage to this here car and sign of Urza. You look so sad. You look so sad. Um, attack it's Karn. A, yeah, it's at seven. You can go. You can't see the look on Ross's face right now, but I assure you it is delicious. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to keep on ticking up. I don't mind these lands. You can have a land. Play it. Hmm. All right. Ten. Let's figure out if I want to pump it all. I'm going to pump once. Nine. And I'll play a Rekindling Phoenix. Your turn, I guess. Which one? Which one? I'm just dead. <laughs> I, it's just no coming back. Okay, we are here for sideboarding in what is potentially a 75-card mirror because there was a prominent list of this deck played at a recent Grand Prix. Um, on my side, I'm just swapping out some removal for different removal spells that I think match up better against the threats in this deck. Um, 
because unlicensed dis disintegration doesn't go to planeswalkers anymore because of the change in that rule, I think the card is a lot worse in a matchup like this where um, we're mainly fighting, I think, over planeswalkers unless one person is really far ahead. Mm -hmm. So really, I just want cleaner removal for blockers uh, so I can more effectively clear Todd's board and then attack his planeswalkers. And that's what I think these removal spells do. Okay, my side, um, I'm not sure how to approach the mirror match. Uh, I feel like since we both have so much removal uh, and not a lot of it goes towards Planeswalkers, I feel like one of the better options is going to be to be much less aggressive, especially on the draw and just be more reactive, have more spot removal, uh, maybe some duresses to strip their uh, Planeswalker out of their hand before it hits the battlefield. Um Scrap Heap Scrounger, you know, doesn't play defense well, so if you're the second person playing the second Scrap Heap, it's not great. Uh, taking Scrap Heap out also means that, like, Magma Spray doesn't do anything against me. Uh, Heart of Kirin, uh, you know, a Braid is one of the better cards in the matchup because of Heart of Kirin. Uh, so I think trimming these just turns a lot of his removal into dead cards, so we'll see how that works out. Okay, here for game two. Um, gonna need to draw some lands like last game. Hopefully we can do it this time. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm kind of in the same boat as I was last game, except last game I drew lands and you didn't. Uh, but being on the draw here, I think, might actually give me a slight advantage. Just because hitting all your land drops up to four is really important. Yeah, dead. <laughs> well, you got another draw to hit it. Do I, though? Your turn. Yeah, right now. You can go. I feel, I feel so bad. All right, your turn. <laughs> you can go. <laughs> Man, okay. Uh which this one. Yeah, we're just gonna just go to get up. Man, okay, so I think maybe there's a chance. Okay, I'll take this one. Do you do you wanna concede or are we gonna play this one out or Oh man You go to nineteen. Rats. You can go. Okay. All right. Just keep ticking up. I want to protect it with damage as much as possible. You can get a slew. Maybe I'm supposed to mulligan every hand that has fewer than three lands. Minus. There's a chance this gets killed by another Goblin Chain Weller, but since we have the backup under here, that's fine. You're at 18. Yep. Yeah. You can go. He cleared one. Uh, take up. Karna's stupid. You can have an Aether Hub. Alright, play my land. I'll start with a duress. See what's up. Yeah, that's not good. Now he gets to take my. Well, I kind of want to take... So he has a bunch of removal, right? All this, So Karn is the card that I will have the uh, most trouble beating by itself, I believe. Since none of the damage actually hits it. Chandra, however, could potentially ultimate and become a problem. So what we can do this turn is Chandra tick up a braid... But then we might actually have trouble dealing with the Heart of Kieran. Hmm. This is kind of tough. It's an interesting spot. So if he draws a land next turn, he'll be able to go Chandra to take down. Uh, can we deal with it if, if that's the case? Not currently. Oh, no, we can minus some Chain Waller. Okay, uh, let's take Karn. And I will glory bringer attack and kill the chain waller. Your turn. He doesn't draw a land. Game's over, pretty much. Pass. Alright, so he has the uh, Chandra defeat. All right, I'll get Chandra, play it. I will take it. For mana? Or? 
Uh, no, I'm just gonna reveal a card. I'm gonna get energy first. Then. Yeah. <laughs> Want to play this walking ballista? I do not. I'll deal you. Well, do I? So if he goes, if he doesn't end a turn, Chandra's defeat. It's gonna be a hit for four, but not five. Yeah, I'll cast it for X equals one. Get more pressure on the battlefield. Now he's got to deal with like both of these. Okay. Hmm. Here we go. Well, we definitely need to Chandra's defeat this thing, and now I get to loot. Rummage. Get to rummage. I guess I should probably just pitch one of these abrades. That seems like the weakest card. And now we'll see what I can do. Um. These two decks not having clean answers to Planeswalkers makes the mirror feel pretty bad, to be honest. Scrounger. Mm -hmm. Crew. Four. Mm -hmm. List on one. Shoot. Hmm. Okie doke. Pass the turn. I did what I could. Todd's only up 17 cards. <laughs> right in it. 16 to 18, right? Hmm. Uh, I have you at, at 20. Uh, you dealt me two with the Chain Whirlers. I have you at 18. I have me at... Oh, yeah. I forgot a, I, I forgot my side. I hit you last time. Yeah. I'm at 16. Forgot the Glorybringer. I was busy wallowing in self-pity. Sure. Takes a lot of mental energy. All right. Spray this. Classic. Wacky for five. Put you to 11. Yep. And... Play Phoenix, say go. At this point, we're like transitioning to be a little more beatdown oriented. Like, we could have played a couple of really tough to beat permanents last turn, but the Phoenix is also very good in the spot. He's already burned a Ballista. Uh, uh, he's, he's down on mana. We know his hand doesn't quite match up that well. Pass the turn. I'm going to braid this. Okay, beat that. Alright, attack. It is houred. That is fine. Um, let's see. Can we just pump this twice? Seems way worse than just playing two planeswalkers. <laughs> All right, so you're at six. I'm at six. <laughs> Whatever. A dilly two, and take this up. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> You just lost the match. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Well, no, we're no, done. No, we're not. We're just done. done. Make your land drops, kids. It's really important. Karn is very good. Yeah. Hitting your land drop so you can cast Karn on the draw before your opponent is very good. And no, I'm not advocating that you should take the draw. I'm advocating that you need to draw lands. Yeah. How many lands are in this deck? Like 25? A lot. A lot for a semi-aggressive deck, for sure. Yeah. Well, they had to like, cut all the one drops. They got the aggressive elements on the board, which is a juke that I like. Oh, for sure. Um, um, I mean, I think one of the, the, the weird things about this deck and, and what makes it so unique in the standard format is that... Uh, you have a lot of anti-aggro cards in your deck, and because of the card Goblin Chain Whirler, you're not able to play stuff like Bowmat Courier, which are traditionally very good against, say, Blue-Eyed Control. And uh, Jennifer Cross's version, which we both ended up playing, uh, has both uh, Glintsleaf Siphoner and Bowmat Courier in the sideboard, which can be nightmarish for a Blue-Eyed Control deck. Yeah. So you're basically like pre-sideboarded for the non-control decks, and then you transition down when we've normally seen more aggressive decks transition up into mid-range decks in standard this uh, flip-flops that which is really cool yeah um i would be very interested to see how this matchup would play out if we both hit land drops like let's yeah, say so you cast Car bear with me <laughs> like like it, honestly like if we both played karn on turn four like what kind of a game is that going to be? Because neither of us have Vraska's Contempt. Neither of us have Never to Return. Our unlicensed integrations don't deal damage to Planeswalkers. Chandra Tickups can't deal damage to Planeswalkers. 
we're basically left just only having creatures that can attack planeswalkers and deal them damage. And the rest of our deck is full of removal. Like, I could see a game in a mirror match like this where you play Karn on 4, I play Karn on 4, and neither of them ever die. <laughs> and that is just bananas to me because, you know, neither uh, Karn doesn't have an ultimate per se. So we would really just be like ticking up, grinding, ticking down. Like, whoever gets the best flips off of Karn maybe has a slight advantage. Yeah. But at the same time, like, you want to hit your land drops, and if you're flipping two lands off a of Karn or, like, laying in a good card, like, you're getting a good card every other turn, and you're hitting your land drop every other turn, so you're able to start double spelling these, like, three fours and five drops. Feels a lot like uh, Company Mirrors in that respect. Sure. Those went really long because both decks, even though their curves were pretty low to uh, enable Company, they had so many ways to gain card advantage right. that on turn 15, both players still had five cards in their hand. And Karn is going to do a similar thing. Yeah. So we're going to play this is really long game. We're going to have a ton of resources on both sides of the battlefield. And it's going to be incredibly complex and intricate to see who can extract the most value out of each of their cards mm -hmm. to eventually whittle their opponent down or just find an opening somewhere. Maybe you open up and find attacks in the air that let you finally deal with the Planeswalker and then bury them. Maybe you just find an opening where you get to attack them. And then right. uh, maybe there's a, a transition where you start playing some removal spells that go to the face. Uh, and and become a burn deck that way, or you start bringing in like, these really powerful effects like fight with fire and just kick that. Oh, that would be tight. Yeah. No, I mean, so so me and Ross uh, before this video, we we grabbed some lunch, and uh, he was telling me about this mono red deck that uh, Team Brew Crew played on the Standard Super League. Yep. And was this your creation? It was. I tell wrote about, about it about a month ago. Tell us about this deck because I was very interested in this deck, and if, if you want to check. The backlogs of StarCGames.com, feel free. Just search for Ross Merriam under the article header. Scroll down about a page or two, and you'll you'll be able to find it. But this Fight with Fire deck, this Go Big Red deck, feels like it would be insane in this matchup. Yeah, uh, and it has proven to be quite good in, in the matchup. Um, I think especially the fact that a license disintegration doesn't pressure Planeswalkers really changes it. But it was the deck was born out of the my idea that Fight with Fire is really underrated. It happened... Um, Weeks ago, in the early stages of the format, when Lyra was really popular, you saw a lot of main deck Lyras and more on the board, and the red decks were really struggling, and Fight with Fire is just such a clean answer to Lyra on the front side, with some uh, bonus on the back side, obviously kicking it. Well, when you're getting hit with Settle the Wreckage as well, yep. it doesn't, you know, take a, a, a math scientist to determine <laughs> that you can get the nine mana pretty quickly when your opponent just gives you a bunch of free lands. Yeah, so it started as, as just a, an idea to try to use Fight with Fire. We got Jaya Ballad at the top end, so a lot of Planeswalkers, mm -hmm. uh, and just a, a mid-range red deck, sort of the way that this deck is built. Pretty similar. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've never been the biggest fan of Heart of Kirin uh, in general, and to see a deck where the only real ways you have to crew Heart of Kirin are uh, uh, Scrap Heap Scrounger, Goblin Chain Whirler, and Planeswalkers, basically. Like, you have, you know, some Pias, and yeah. you could make well, a 3-3 three, three Ballista. My deck has basically all those cards and three Heart of Kirin at Todd, so... Why do you Heart have Heart of, of Kirin? Because the cards are great. Do you and have Scrap Heap Scrounger? No. Well, you why just, do you have Heart of You Kirin? just need to pressure Planeswalkers. That's the only one that can. Is there not just more burn spells that say, like... Creature or Planeswalker, maybe? Or? Not really. Like You need to play Sprays and Braids to deal with the other threats. It's the same bind that, that we're in here. Okay. that's a, That makes you less high on the deck. Well, I do still love Fight with Fire, because it can kill Planeswalkers, too, when you kick it, When right? you kick it, yes. yes it goes any target. It. it should just be able to hit Planeswalkers for five damage. It would just be good. Then it would be awesome. Yeah. Cool. It would be slightly better. Yeah. Uh, Planeswalkers are too good. I'm just going on record. A three mana spell from Red Deck should be able to kill a Teferi. Just get him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's going to be all for me and Ross today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video as well as our post match banter. I know Ross was a little salty at first. Hopefully he'll win no, tomorrow. I'm, I'm still pretty salty. Okay. Hopefully I make some land drops. Hopefully he wins tomorrow so I don't have to listen to him complain for the next month about how unlucky he got in this Black Red Mirror on the Versus series. Well, I mean, this already happened. I'm going to complain about this regardless of what happens tomorrow. So, Yes, but you will complain less over time. It's, uh, it's That's a also going to happen regardless equation. of what happens tomorrow. So really, tomorrow is irrelevant for that. You should still come and watch it. Yeah, you're a great salesman. It's <laughs> a, a very good salesman. <laughs> All right, well, tomorrow we will have one more modern video in preparation for 
uh, SCG Regionals this weekend. If you are planning on going to SCG Regionals or just want to know some more information, uh, check out StarCityGames.com. Slash Regionals. Slash Regionals. And that'll give you a list of all of the uh, locations in which they will be run, uh, as well as start times, yeah, links to various fees, web pages, entry fees, price structure, uh, all, yeah, that, all that fun stuff. Anything you need to know should be there, so head on over there. Uh, I know I'm going. You going? Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. Are we going together? Probably. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for watching the verse here at StarCityGames.com. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow.